Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel Dentistify. I hope you all are doing great. So today's video is basically in continuation to my previous video which gave you a brief overview about fixed partial dentures and their components. Link for that video will be provided in the description box below for you. So today we will talk about various indications, contraindications, advantages and disadvantages of fixed partial dentures. So if you are interested in gaining some knowledge about the topic then you should continue watching this video. Now let's start with the indications of fixed partial dentures. A fixed partial denture is commonly indicated in short span edentulous arches where one or two adjacent teeth are missing. FPD is indicated in presence of sound abutment teeth which are periodontally healthy and which can offer sufficient support to the bridge adjacent to the edentulous space. FPD is also indicated in the patients who prefer a fixed partial denture over a removable partial denture. Okay, why? Because FPD being less bulky as compared to RPD, so the patients find it to be more aesthetic, more stable and comfortable. And if we talk about speech, patients find it easier to speak with FPD as compared to RPD. FPD can also be indicated in patients with temporomandibular joint disorders in order to harmonize the dental occlusion. FPD is generally indicated in patients who are motivated enough for maintaining good oral hygiene. Another thing is that when removable prosthesis is not indicated as in mentally or physically challenged patients, in such patients we can go with the FPD. FPD can be indicated to replace missing teeth when implants are not indicated. For example, in patients with extensive bone loss or inadequate uh, bone levels or in patients who cannot afford to go for implants as a treatment option because of the expensive treatment. Now let's talk about the contraindications of fixed partial dentures. So fixed partial dentures are generally avoided if long edentulous spaces are present. Uh, also when bilateral uh, edentulous spaces are present along with more than two adjacent teeth missing on either side of the arc. In such cases we require cross arc stabilization which can be provided only by a removable partial denture. So in such cases where cross arc stabilization is required we prefer RPD instead of FPD. So a fixed partial denture is generally contraindicated if the abutments are periodontally compromised. That means if the abutments they are not healthy, they are not capable of providing support to the prosthesis, in those cases we prefer not to go with the FPD. So the abutments might be having unfavorable crown root ratio which makes them unfavorable for FPD or the abutments might be having insufficient surface area or they might be heavily restored. So mobile teeth are not good candidates as abutments for FPD because tooth mobility increases the risk of debonding. A fixed partial denture is not indicated in patients with parafunctional habits. Okay, For example, bruxism, clenching or nail biting. So if the patient is having such parafunctional habits, we prefer not to go with the FPD in such patients because they will not be successful in such patients. A fixed partial denture is generally not indicated for patients with congenitally malformed teeth. Why? Because these congenitally malformed teeth have short clinical crown which do not have adequate tooth structure to offer support to the prosthesis. It's also contraindicated for those who are allergic to base metal alloys, for example nickel. However, metal free prosthesis can be given for such patients. So those patients who have poor oral hygiene along with the being at an increased risk for secondary caries, they are poor candidates for uh, fixed partial denture. Okay, so FPD is generally not indicated for very young patients 
as they have wide pulp chambers and teeth may not be fully erupted. So, we prefer not to go with FPD in such patients. FPD is generally avoided in uh, very old, mentally sensitive and medically compromised patients who cannot cooperate or who cannot bear with the invasive treatment procedures. Okay. A conventional fixed partial denture is not indicated when there is edentulous space with no distal abutment. In such cases, cantilever FPD is indicated. So, a cantilever FPD is that prosthesis which is generally given when the abutments are present only on one side of the edentulous space. I have already posted a detailed video on uh, cantilever FPDs and a link for that video will be provided in the description box below for you. In case you have not watched it, you must. Now let's talk about the advantages of fixed partial dentures. As I have already discussed in my previous video that fixed partial dentures are definitely an effective solution for the replacement of missing teeth both functionally and aesthetically. So a fixed partial denture allows the patient to chew food normally and it improves masticatory efficiency. And if we talk about speech, FPD enables the patient to speak without inhibition and FPD rarely causes any difficulty in speech. Why? Because the size of pontic in FPD is almost similar to the uh, tooth which is being replaced. Okay, So, FPD is definitely more aesthetic as compared to RPD because of the absence of clasps and acrylic denture base uh, in FPD. So, a fixed Partial denture is more stable for the patient as compared to a removable partial denture. Why? Because a fixed partial denture is capable of directing the occlusal forces to the periodontium along the long axis of the supporting teeth. So, therefore, a fixed partial denture is capable of providing a stable occlusion better than a removable partial denture. Also, many patients prefer a fixed partial denture over a removable partial denture because they are more comfortable and because of their easy maintenance. Unlike RPD, FPD need not be removed regularly for cleaning and it can be cleaned just like natural teeth by brushing. Another advantage of FPD is that FPD helps to maintain the arc integrity by maintaining the position of adjacent and opposing teeth and FPD also maintains the occlusal relationships. So generally an edentulous space causes the adjacent and opposing teeth to gradually shift position and spread out as shown in the diagram. However, when a fixed partial denture is used to replace the missing teeth, it reduces the risk of movement of adjacent teeth and consequent problems of the bite and it prevents the supra eruption of the opposing teeth as we can see here. So, this means that by reducing the risk of movement of the adjacent teeth and by preventing supra eruption of the opposing teeth, FPD helps to maintain the arc integrity and maintains the occlusal relationships. So, another advantage of FPD is that the retainer part of a fixed partial denture restores the fractured and badly carious teeth. Now let's talk about the disadvantages of FPD. So most of the disadvantages or adverse effects of fixed partial denture occur due to the poor techniques which are followed during tooth preparation. So a major shortcoming of using FPD as a treatment option is that it involves significant tooth reduction of the abutments which may have irreversible effects on the pulp and periodontium. Another disadvantage is that subgingival margins are required in the anterior region of the mouth in order to fulfill the aesthetic demands. But these are often associated with the increased gingival inflammation. So another disadvantage is that secondary caries can happen under the margins of the retainers of FPD. 
so what happens is that poor margins of the restoration or poor maintenance of oral hygiene by the patient can result in marginal leakage okay and this leads to secondary caries so tooth fracture or porcelain fracture can occur due to the poor techniques which are followed during tooth preparation for example tooth fracture can occur because of the excessive tooth reduction leaving insufficient tooth structure to resist the occlusal forces now this insufficient tooth structure obviously gets fractured in future another thing is that porcelain fracture can also occur so porcelain fracture can occur due to the presence of occlusal interferences or due to parafunctional habits which involve heavy occlusal forces like clenching and bruxism so another disadvantage is that periodontal problems can arise due to the poor pontic design or due to poor marginal adaptation or uh, the periodontal problems can even arise due to the poor oral hygiene maintained by the patient another disadvantage is that poor retention of the prosthesis can occur due to the over reduction of the abutments and another thing is that tmj problems or the temporomandibular joint problems can arise due to failure to eliminate the occlusal interferences or due to an altered vertical dimension which leads to occlusal problems so to summarize i would just say that in order to determine the appropriate use of a fixed partial denture for each unique clinical situation it is always wise to consider the advantages and disadvantages of the procedure okay we should always weigh the advantages and disadvantages of the procedure for every clinical situation because every clinical situation is unique and then proceed so yeah do like this video if you find it helpful and if you want me to make more such videos do subscribe to this channel and press that notification bell which is next to the subscribe button so that you will get notified whenever i post a new video and don't forget to share it with your friends and colleagues you can also drop your suggestions about the topics you want me to cover in the comment section below i'll see you very soon in my next video till then take care